as well. Why is it saying rotate? There we go. I think we're live. <laughs> Good morning. Are we all ready for Easter cupcakes? Just. I can't see anything here. Is anyone out there in Facebook land? Oh, I've got two people. Make sure you say hello so I know you're here. Good morning, hello. I'm just softening up some of my fondant. So if you're sitting there waiting for me to start, you can, um, you only need a couple of little pieces of fondant. Just give it a good knead. We're gonna do our fondant work first. Okay, oh, I've got three people now. Oh, I can see myself, this is weird. And it's delayed. Actually, we need to have a look and see which direction it's going on the computer. <laughs> we oh, got seven people now. Um, can someone just tell me if I'm the right way up or if I'm sideways? <laughs> oh, hello, Tanya. And it's also delayed to what I'm doing as to what I can see that I'm doing in your comments. So there'll be a little bit of a delay. Sideways. Sideways? Okay, hold on. I'm going to move the camera. All right. Do, 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 do. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, no. Just a sec. Got to swap the phones and what they're sitting in. So you need this one. Okay. How's that? Am I the right way up now? Well, I've got the delay, so. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Anyone else motion sick? There we go. people on we're gonna make some Easter cupcakes today uh, the first thing I want to talk about is my Franken cupcakes all right so I made some gluten-free cupcakes last night in a rush I was using gluten-free flour I hadn't used before and I thought let's chuck some sprinkles in so this is what my cupcakes look like they're a little bit overflowed they're not perfect they're certainly not to the standard that we normally put out in the shop but you know what it's a cupcake and it's going to get covered um so what i wanted to do first was do the fondant bits and pieces because they're the cleanest and if we do buttercream first then fondant it's going to go everywhere so you only need about a marble sized piece of fondant in um four different lumps we're going to pop one lump aside because that's going to be white and then we're going to color these three now, usually I would use Chef Master coloring. I have some Caroline's coloring at home and I also have some old liquid coloring at home. And I'm gonna color with these three different ones because really it doesn't matter what variety of coloring you're using as long as you're getting color. Now, me being me, I put a colossal amount of coloring onto that piece of fondant. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Jenny demonstration if I didn't make a mess. So I've just taken some of that off. Now, if you are using a liquid coloring or a natural coloring at home, it is going to be a little bit paler in color, but that's okay. Easter's typically pastel colors. So when you're coloring fondant, you're just stretching and folding. If you just squash like that, the coloring's not gonna go through. Now, if you want it marbled, don't quite mix it so much. Okay. So I have my green. This is really strange because what I can see on the other phone is um, <laughs> is delayed. I love that. Kylie has just said that I've made cupcakes her way. Kylie, your cupcakes are fine. 
Kylie, Kylie firmly believes that talking to your cupcakes when you make them is how you um, get them to work properly. Obviously, I didn't talk to my cupcakes. <laughs> Telling staff secrets here. All right, so I've popped some pink into this lump. And I'm just going to mix it through. I'm using the new over-the-top fondant that we've got. That's um, it's like $5.50 for 250 grams. It's an excellent price. Feels pretty good, actually. It's not too sticky. I don't like sticky fondant. Okay. Oh, Ste Stefan's actually working on his computer at home um, today. I've got Lego stands holding the, um, <laughs> the phones. Hi, Marika. All right, now, this is a liquid colouring. So this is probably, and I only put a tiny bit on, liquid colouring that you buy in a cake decorating shop is about 100 times stronger, I kid you not, than liquid colouring you buy in Woolworths. Now... When you're using a liquid colouring, you put a small amount in because you're adding water and things will go sticky. I'm not saying that you can't use liquid colouring. Absolutely, you can. Um, oh, hi, Tash. It's, um, you just got to be a bit more cautious. So this one's a creative liquid colouring. In the shop, I have the Caroline's brand. And there we go. So now I have my three colours of fondant. Get that out of the way. I'm attempting to be clean. And if anyone's watched my Friday demonstrations or seen me teach, keeping clean is not high on my list of skills. All right. So I want to cut out some little shapes to decorate our cupcakes with. I have a bunny and a flower and an egg. And I'm going to um, then make a carrot. I for Hi, Jasmine. I forgot to bring a carrot cutter home with me from the shop, so I'll show you how to make one without it. Now, I've got my trusty rolling pin here. Um, this is one of my little flower making rolling pins. I find the smaller the pieces of icing you're working with, the smaller the rolling pin makes it better. Ooh. There we go. Just knocked the phone over that I'm seeing what you guys are saying to me on. There we go. So when you're rolling out your fondant, just do a little roll and pick it up and move it, okay? If you do that, oh no, I've got volume on the phone now, no idea. Um, if you keep picking it up and moving it, what you'll find is it's less likely to stick to the bench. I've got a stone bench top at home, so I'm not rolling on a rolling mat or anything. Laminex, um, hi Emily. Laminex is, you'll need some corn flour. All right, so I'm just gonna cut out a flour and an egg and a bunny in blue i'm being equal opportunity here everything will i'll make one of each in each color now if your fondant sticks to the bench when you cut it grab a palette knife or a spatula whatever you want to call it and just come in underneath to pick it up and pop those guys aside i'm going to do the same thing in pink and these don't have to be overly thick uh, the thicker they are the longer they'll take to dry Okay, egg, flour, and bunny. Now, if you don't use all these on your cupcakes today, you can just pop them in a container and use them later. Um, once the fondant's dry, it'll be fine for a long, long time. All right, some green. Now, you'll notice I haven't got my fondant wrapped. I'm giving this one a little bit of a road test to see how it goes with it out, without it being wrapped, seeing if it's... Um, as good as the Vision is in that regard. We love that one because we don't need to wrap it up in class. All right, so I have green and pink and blue in each color. So then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit of each of them. Hi Anita, hi Tracy. And I'm gonna marble these together, okay? When you're marbling, you're not doing too much mixing. You're just giving it a little gentle mix so that when you roll it out, you'll see what you get. Now, when you do marble, check both sides, see which one you like best. Probably could have gone a bit more marbly there, but I'll cut a couple of eggs out.
see if I can get a bit more of a better marble going. Um, when, when you are marbling, if you have a dark colour, like if you're trying to marble black, keep the amount of your dark colour to an absolute minimum um, because it will be the one that stick shines through. Okay, make a couple more eggies. All right, does anyone have any questions so far or are you just all just watching along seeing on how much of a mess I can make? So if you have a carrot cutter, which was one of the ones I put on the picture, you can just cut out some tops of your carrots in green. Because I forgot to bring one home, <laughs> I'm gonna make my carrot tops. So I've just got a ball of icing. Just gonna roll it into a bit of a teardrop shape because you know everything I do starts as a teardrop shape. Flatten your mat a little bit. Little piece of pair of scissors. Just do two snips in there. And then I'm just gonna give those guys a little bit of a point. So once I plant him in some icing, it's gonna look like the top of a carrot. It looks kind of like a paw at the minute. Oh, hi, Nicole. How are you going up north side? I know there was a couple of sets of kids set to watch today and um, make some cupcakes at home. I know there's some kids who are going to re-watch it next week when they're not busy doing their schoolwork. <laughs> Marika's making me watch a mess. Marika has known me for far too long to know that there's any other way for me to work than to make a mess. <laughs> Alright, so I've got plenty of little carrot tops going here now. Um, what I did forget to do when I did my marbling was keep a little bit of pink aside. So I just need to make a little bit more pink. Oh, there's 20 people watching now. Hello, 20 people in Facebook land. This is all very new and unusual for me. <laughs> Marika's just said I taught her well how to make a mess too. All right, how are we going with our shapes? Does anyone need more time to make their fondant shapes? Just caffeinating at the moment. There's stuff sliding everywhere. The Lego just won't stay put. All right, so I'm going to make my bunny bottom now. So what I want to start with is a, um, a round ball of fondant, about the size of the marble or a Malteser, and then I'm just going to squish it flat, okay? Making a round like that. Now, you can make that bigger if you want, you can make that smaller if you want, but it's all good. <laughs> Um, then with the, so that's the bottom itself. Okay. Then for the pores, you want two pieces of fondant about the size of a pea. Now this is an Australian pea, not an English pea. Now, if Debbie Brown is watching this at all, she'll remember a great big conversation about Australian peas versus English peas and the fact that there's a sizable difference. So with each round ball, I then want to just give it a little bit of a roll and to make a slightly elongated shape okay now when you're making two things the same size if you make them at the same time and start with the same size ball of fondant you've got a much better chance of them ending up the same size in the end and then we're going to give it a little bit of a squish and a bit of a squish and then we're going to grab our scissors now if you're working with kids you don't need to do this bit but I like to put toes in um, so you don't need to do this, or mum and dad can do this bit if you're worried about sharp, fine scissors. All right. Now, this is where I realise I didn't get any glue out, but that's all right. I need a little bit of two little pink balls of fondant now. 
actually, I do need some glue. Look, there's, there's a paintbrush and some water. That will do the job. So a tiny little bit of water under the pores and because look water moisture and sugar make sticky I wouldn't be doing this on sugar flowers I'd be using proper sugar glue on the sugar flowers but just for little cupcake toppers it's fine and then you're just going to pop your little pieces of pink on the pores you can go to the extra step of putting tiny little pink balls on the toes as well um yes you could absolutely kylie you could use a dresden tool or a veining tool um to make the toes so that's um linda likes to call it in the kids classes a scoopy tool it's got a um a sharp edge on one side or a sharpish edge absolutely you could use that to make um the little toes now with the tail I've just made a round ball and I'm just going to spike it. Now you can do this with a pair of scissors, you can do this with a knife, you can do this with a skewer. Anything that has a pointy end of some description just to give it a bit of a texture. You could even do it with the back of the end of the paintbrush if you want to. Just something to make it look a little bit different. So I'll pick this up and show you the bunny bottom. Let me see, am I showing it to you? Yep, there you go, there's the bunny bottom. And he's ready. Do you want me to make him again? <laughs> Nicole's just said this tutorial is reminding her of all the things she forgot to buy. Um, look, I could tell a lie and say I was fully prepared, but we were nearly home last night from doing all the home deliveries. And Stefan says, did you remember to bring fondant home? <laughs> I completely forgot to bring any fondant home last night, so I've been down to the shop this morning to grab fondant. I might make that bunny bottom again for you, just in case there are people playing along at home. I tend to work very quickly, but I don't have people to say, slow down. my round ball this time it's like a chocolate covered macadamia nut size I tend to work a lot in food <laughs> like in food sizes because it's something people can relate to then two pieces of icing the same size and roll them into a tapered log for the feet then I'm going to give them a squish squish Need some more water. Pop those on. Kind of look like ears without the toes chopped in. So far, I'm relatively impressed with how this fondant's working. Jim, if you're watching, good job. Jim's my over the top sales rep. <laughs> Maraka, we have children watching. Yeah. Sometimes we make like oversized minions and and stuff. Yes, thank you, Kylie. The shop is open from one till four to get supplies tomorrow. Um, if you have a home delivery order in, um, we will still do those each day, even when the shop's not open. So if you're desperate for stuff this afternoon, um, we can deliver today. Or you can come and visit me tomorrow and say hello. All right. So that's the the second little funny bottom done. There we go. All right, pop him aside. So it's almost like we've got a a mummy bunny and a and a baby bunny. So that's all the fondant bits and pieces we're going to need. I think. Let me check my list. Yep, that's fine. So now we're going to get on to colouring our buttercream. I'm just going to move my fondant bits out of the way because I'm very good at squishing things. Is anyone making these at home? Or are you all just watching? We've got 21 people watching now. Feel free to send questions through, guys. Preferably related to this demo. Usually related to cake decorating. 
Okay, so I'm going to colour some buttercream now. Um, Stefan's watching. <laughs> You're meant to be working. Um, so I'm going to colour some buttercream blue, some green and some pink. Um, you probably want blue to be the least amount. Green. Oh, hi, Claire. Claire's kids are watching and making. Um, so you want blue to be the least amount and you want pink for your cupcake swirl to be the greatest amount and then medium about for the grass is green. Um, however, you can do whatever colours you want. If you want to do black grass, you can do black grass. Um, if you want to do purple, you can do purple. I love purple. So the buttercream I've made is from butter. And so it does have a yellow tinge to it. And you need to keep this in mind when you're colouring because if you only put a tiny bit of blue, actually I'll do the blue first, yeah. If you only put a tiny bit of blue colouring into a yellow buttercream, so into a butter buttercream, it's actually going to go green. So you need to take your time and build it up. And again, I'm using that blue liquid colouring. So this is what they call a true blue or a royal blue. So it's got a little bit of red in it. So see how it's got a tip, touch of green to it? It's got all, almost a touch of grey. I'm going to add a bit more. See how bright it can go. yellow base of your buttercream it's just it depends on the colors you want I tend not to whiten my buttercream unless it has to be white 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 all right so I got my blue gonna do the green with the leaf green coloring see how that goes oh sorry guys I mixed that blue slightly out of shot remember your gel colors are really quite strong um, when I started doing a lot of cake decorating, all of our colourings came in little tubs and used toothpicks. And I, over the last 10 years, I still haven't mastered the art of the dropper bottle. So my colours all tend to be quite dark. It's good to see how pure buttercream... Yeah, yeah, pure butter buttercream. I only ever use So Light in my buttercream when it's, um... For classes who need white or um, if it's really hot so using Solite or Crisco in your buttercream will keep things a lot more stable so if it's the middle of summer and a cake's needed outside absolutely I'd use Solite other than that I always use butter all right so going in here with the trusty Caroline's pink coloring it's probably gonna be really bright and again if you are going for a baby 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 pink um, and you put it into a pure butter icing, oh, this is very bright, you're going to get a um, almost a peachy colour. Well, look at that. See, I'm not capable of making pastel colours. Everything ends up really bright. daughter's watching she's meant to be doing school what hi Libby Libby's gonna make them over the weekend with the video Kylie's just waved at you hello on the Facebook live <laughs> I'm, I'm confused that's all right okay so now we're gonna put the piping tips in the piping bags so we have our grass tip this is a 234, just making sure you can see that. This is the larger of the two grass tips. If you only have the 233, oh, sorry, Emily Waters. Uh, that pink was just the pure pink from Caroline's um, that I've had in the cupboard for a lot of years. It's just as good, like the Baker's Rose or any pink gel coloring is fine. Um, yep, yeah, so this is the 234 tip. It's the larger of the two leaf tip, grass tips. If you only have the smaller one, that's fine. You'll get finer grass. It's just a little bit more work to pipe out. Hi, Erin. Is my friend Zoe watching too? Um, no, she'll be at school. 
Oh. Um, the one M tip, which is your cupcake swirl tip. And then I have an open star tip, which is the number 18. So you can use anything from a 16 to an 18 to a 21. You can, um, okay, I'll, I'll try and slow down, Tanya. <laughs> Jess is running a little bit behind. Um, you can use any open star tip for this bit. All right. I use disposable piping bags at home and I don't have to feel guilty about it anymore because all disposable piping bags that Loyal now produce are biodegradable. So you don't have to feel guilty about throwing them out anymore. Um, I only use fabric piping bags now if I'm piping really fine royal icing or if I'm piping cookie dough, like if I'm doing melting moments, I've just found disposals aren't quite strong enough for that. All right, so with your disposable piping bag, just gonna, oh look, fingers aren't working. I've got sugar build up on my fingers. Oh, there we go. So, I just fold the cup of the piping bag back, makes it easier for filling, and I'm gonna drop the tip down inside. Now, don't force the tip hard up into the top of the bag. You just wanna have it sitting there. Then you can get a pair of scissors, and I just score where I wanna cut. Sometimes that'll cut through, sometimes it won't. So on the 234, you just need to make sure the ends pipe poking through, and there's no little bits dangling. Let me just trim that off. Can you see that? See how the end's just poking through? That's what we're going for. Oh, Blake says hello. Hello, Blake. How's school from home? Of course it's live. Of course it's live, Blake. All right. With the 1M tip. Oh. These are just picking on me today. All right, so folding the cup back again. With the 1M tip, when we trim the bag, we need to make sure that this, the bottom here, the valley is clear of the bag. If it's not, you're not gonna get a crisp piping image. So just gonna score just below those valleys and pull that off and see how now it's nice and clear of all the little valleys? That's what we're looking for. Got 21 people watching. Oh, anyone would think I don't play parking bags all the time. What's a good alternative to a 1M? Um, you can use like a 4B or a 6B or an 8B. You can if any open star tip. So anything that has prongs on it uh, that's nice and open in the middle. I will say though that the 1M tip is pretty much the most popular tip you ever sell. If I have less than 50 in the shop, I'm worried. Surely you've got a 1M, Erin. <laughs> But yeah, any open stuff, even the cream coloured plastic pastry tubes, they're fine for doing cupcake swirls as well. I just find some of them get quite big and the bigger the opening, the more icing you're going to use. All right, now, to fill a piping bag, I like to use my trusty Coca-Cola glass. I'm not getting kickbacks from Coke. I've had this thing oh, nearly 20 years now. I think it's the last one I've got left. And it just makes a really easy way to hold the icing. <laughs> and then that way you can just plonk your icing down. Now in a class situation, I show people how to fill a piping bag without using a glass. This is just a lot easier. Less chance of me dropping things everywhere. Erin says she probably does have a 1M piping tip. <laughs> then you can pull it up like that unfold the cup and then you're going to push all the icing down into the front of the bag. Give the bag a twist and pop him down. Oh, I'm going to put my green into this guy. Okay. Now if you 
want to recap on how to set up your piping bags, there's in the video section of the Facebook page, um, there is a video on how to set up disposable bags, a set up on how to use reusable bags. Hi Megan! She uses the same Coke glass as I do. Yeah, so anytime that Maccas and Hungries have a, um, a deal on with these glasses, go and grab them because <laughs> they're really useful for filling your piping bags. Wilton do make a piping bag holding thing, but you don't need it really. A glass will do. All right, so in a class situation or if you don't have a cup, um, this is how I fill a bag. So I've turned the cup back. I've folded it down. Get your spoonful of icing or your palette knife full of icing and you're wiping it off against one side, sorry. The reason you do it off against one side is so that you don't have to stop and um, open the bag up again. Hi Jenny, good to see you. How's life in teacher land? Can't be easy right now. All right, and then I've done the last, the last little bit of icing. Now, if you're doing this at home with kids, you can get an elastic band and put it around the end of the piping bag. That's gonna stop all the icing spurting out the end, okay? Um, kids like to grab bags like this. Icing goes everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna start with the little, um, the little blue stars. It's quite a simple piping technique to start with. And this is what I'm going to um, put my bunny bottoms into. Hi Denise. So the number 18 star, so you're holding your bag 90 degrees to the piping surface. Let me see, yes, that's in shot. And you're just going squeeze, stop squeezing and pull away. Now, if you wanna be really neat about it, you can do a dot in the middle and then go around the edge or you can start around the edge and work your way in. It's really up to you. Now, the closer your piping tip is to the surface, the less icing that you're gonna pipe out. If you start really high, you're gonna get a lot of icing. Just depends on how much sugar you want your family to have on a daily basis. Now, my poor family is gonna be inundated with sugar because of um, all the demos we're doing. Now, on this one, I'm gonna pop the bunny bottom in. And then, you know, he needs a little bit of cheering up, so he's getting some sprinkles. I'm using the Rainbow Jimmies we use in the shop for the Funfetti Cakes because these are gluten-free, which means I can eat them. You can use whatever sprinkles you want. The little flower sprinkles are very cute. I'm going to put him there. And I'll just do another one. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the outside. Anyone got any questions for me? I always feel the need to fill in blank spaces of time. Okay, so that's the second one like that. Pop the little bunny bottom on and then give him some sprinkles. Oh, we're up to 26. Stefan wants to know when he can have a cupcake. You can have one when I'm finished. Oh, it's hard to get good families these days. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. So that's the bunny bottom one. Um, now, I'm going to do the grass next. <laughs> Linda, Linda watched Kylie piping during Quill and said that I've taught her well. Excellent. Um, <laughs> Emily Waters wants to know if Stefan's going to get delivery to the next room. Love it. Now, with the grass tip, we're wanting a small amount of icing to stick to a cupcake. Um, it's a little bit like your Russian piping tips. It doesn't always stick nicely. So what I recommend people do is put a blow of icing on there to start with and spread it out. Icing is going to stick to icing a lot better than icing is going to stick to cake. All right, so like sticks to like. Sugar will stick to sugar. Icing will stick to icing. It doesn't have to be a big amount, just a small amount like that. Uh, <laughs> so 
to get your grass going right, we start around the outside because if we start around the outside edge, we can get it taller and taller in the center. Your piping tips right next to the piping surface and you squeeze and lift and pull away. Okay. I've got quite stiff icing. Not gonna flop. That's not a bad thing. Okay. And if you don't lift, you're gonna get really squishy, little squishy grass like that. It out making a little grassy knoll there you go so I've got grass grass always needs sprinkles and then I'm going to put some little mini eggs I like the mini eggs um, for my cupcakes because you don't have to take them off and unwrap them before they eat them people tend to look at a cupcake and go oh completely edible item in the mouth it goes so I wouldn't put a foil covered, uh, foil covered Easter egg onto my um, cupcake with the eggs. Now I have a child hovering as well. <laughs> so I'm just going to put some icing down again. Yes, I wonder how Stefan's workplace is feeling if anyone from work's watching this. They're not going to get the cake from the Friday demonstrations. <laughs> I believe they're already um, <laughs> having a sook about that. So I've just put the icing down on the surface and I'm just going to pop a bit more grass. Now, if you find your icing is a little bit stiff to start with, it's actually going to soften up the more you pipe with it because the heat of your hands is going to soften the, um, it's going to soften the icing. Oops, sorry, I think I might have gone out of shot there. All right, let's get pop him aside. Uh, one more. Oh, look, I'm doing this one without um, covering the surface with stuff yet. Now I started piping that one in the middle, um, so I didn't quite get that nice edge going. All right, so into one of these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a bunny. I'm gonna sit him flat. When these are dry, you'll be able to sit them up. Um, before they're dry, they may flop a little bit. Okay, get some sprinkles. Everything's better with sprinkles. Let's give you guys some catch up time there. Oh, you like my bench, Erin? Uh, the mess or the actual colour? This is my chocolate brown bench. It's got beautiful flecks through it and it doesn't show food coloring <laughs> and all the other stuff that goes on. It is the most versatile surface I've ever worked on. I love it. Cost a fortune, but you know, um, it was worth it. And my favorite bit about my kitchen. So where, where are we in shot? Just under the bench here is my bin. So I literally get my bench scraper the scrape all the mess into the bin. It's perfect. All right, so the cupcakes are, uh, can I show you the cakes up close? So that one's the bunny bottom. This one is the grass. And then there's this guy as well. All right, so now the most popular technique we um, get asked about and probably what most people do classes for is the 1M cupcake swirl. So this is like the Mr. Whippy cupcake swirl. So you're using your 1M tip and again, your bag is 90 degrees to the piping surface and you come around the outside of the cake and you come in little by little. Oh, it's a bit stiff. Okay, that's not a brilliant one, Jen. Okay, 
how do I do it again? Sorry, trying to make sure you guys can see this. There we go, it's getting softer. If you find the icing is too firm to pipe out, you can um, get, you put less in it, sorry, um, because the more icing you have, the harder it is to pipe out. So I'm gonna put a little green flour on top of that cupcake swirl. And I'm gonna go put a little blue center in there. Hi, Emma. Okay. And pop some sprinkles on. Now, nice thing about this cupcake swirl is they hold sprinkles beautifully. Oh, Erin's Bench at Home's white, yes. When we redid our kitchen about seven or eight years ago, um, acrylic benches were a thing. And I asked the sales guy what an acrylic, like how they worked. And he says, oh, it's just like acrylic nails. And I said to him, so how does that work if you get high strength food coloring on it? And he goes, well, you just call the number to, and tell them what you've put on the bench and they'll tell you how to get the coloring off. <laughs> and I just looked and went, yeah, no, nah, not for me. The amount of food colouring that goes around this kitchen is amazing. So I'm going to plant my um, carrots. And so instead of doing the swirl from the outside in, I'm going to do a rosette. So that's from the inside out. So the same um, piping bags, 90 degrees to the piping surface. And you're just starting from the middle and piping all the way out. Okay. Had a little air bubble in there. So I'm gonna plant some carrots. Now, obviously you could do this in brown if you wanted to, because yes, dirt's brown, but brown's not particularly an Easter color. And of course, everything is better with sprinkles. Sprinkles, sprinkles, sprinkles. Okay, I've got one. No, I've got two more cupcakes. Um, I might do some more grass. Now, if you find that you're going, oh, I really want to do some more, but I'm running out of icing, okay? If I decided I've done enough blue, what you can do is you can backfill your piping bag to give it a little bit more volume, okay? So I've just squeezed the extra blue into my green so I can do some more grass now. colossal noise of dogs barking it's because we have a postman about to come to the front door although we have got the dogs outside with the glass door shut so they may not hear him there we go now i'm getting some longer grass and some of that blue's coming through it looks quite pretty there we go post is here it's like a little bit more grass put a pink bunny in Now, I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to use some of my chocolate eggs to hold some of my fondant eggs up. If you wanted your fondant eggs to stand up, make them a couple days beforehand to dry out, or you can also um, you can use some tylose or some CMC in there. Kylie says hi puppies. Oh, Jasmine's husband went and got her coffee. Oh, that's nice. I've already made a trip into Jindabar this morning. Got my coffee when I got the fondant. Jindabar is still keeping me caffeinated so the world is safe. Hi Deb, how are you going? <laughs> Tanya's too busy decorating to ask any questions. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> I'm just trying to line all those up to take a good good picture. I'll just pick this up. Ooh. Give you guys some close-ups. So I will just show you quickly one more little thing that's, you know, just occurred to me because that's how my demonstrations work, is if you have... Ha! <laughs> Deb was like to cooking cookies. If you have a flour like that and you want to dry it with a cup shape in it, you can, of course, get out a ball tool and a foaming shape, mat, shaping mat that we use in flour making. Or you can stick it in the palm of your hand and just um, cup it a little bit. Then you can pop it in a cutter smaller than that or you can use a piece of foil and you can sit it there to dry in a nice cup shape that's fine and you can also put a little bit of icing in the middle ooh, ooh, and drop your flour there we go Erin I made a mess it's the usual Friday demonstration thing and you can use sprinkles to make your flower centre. Oh, there we go. Let me see if I can hunt up one more cupcake. Hi, Karen. in here to do a tall one if you end up with a flat swirl like that and you want it to go high you just come in and do another layer all right i've got my flower on there there we go nice pink springtime flower even though it's autumn all right guys well that's it um i'll hang around for a bit in case anyone has any questions um but thanks for tuning in i hope you Gives you some activities to do with the kids. Um, I still haven't figured out how long Facebook Live stay up for. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it'll be on the Facebook page for a while if you want to catch up with it tomorrow or next week or whatever. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, and Thursday I'm going to do a hydrangea cake and also potentially set aside some time, possibly Friday, um, and I'm going to demonstrate the cake that I should have been demonstrating down at the Illawarra branch of the Cake Decorators Association. Um, this will be a pure demonstration. It's too, um, too involved and complex to do it as a make it at the same time type thing. Alrighty. Yes, Tanya, I'll take some close-up photos of the cakes and post them online as well. All right, guys, we'll um, keep posting your comments because I can go and reply to any questions that you have. Um, I will get a notification every time you post. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in and, um, yeah, see you Thursday. Bye.